Hello and welcome to Building a Business Podcast. This is a show where we embark on an adventure with entrepreneurs across various industries, picking their brains and hearts on what it's like starting, building, maintaining, and growing a small business. Building a Business Podcast is supported by Patreon patrons like you. Go to patreon.com slash building a business and help make us better from as low as one US dollars a month. My name is Sean. This week, we are back with Eddie from December 1st Flores. Hi, Eddie. Hi. Thanks for taking the time to join the show again. I know um, it's been a very difficult time for everybody and um, Mm -hmm. especially you as well, right? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So for for listeners, now we are, uh, how many weeks are we in? uh? Three weeks, uh, is it? Three weeks into Into the ENTO thing. FMCO, which is the full lockdown, full version of MCO. I really can't keep track. And we are uh, on the first end of the first week of the EMCO, the Enhanced uh-huh. Movement Control Order in certain districts. Mm-hmm. Are you in a district that is under EMCO? Oh, no. Thank God. Okay. But yeah. um, there's a lot of compli- I would say complication. complication. What was mm-hmm. that word? Uh? Confusion, yes. Uh, yes. Where the FMCO came in and then... Uh, we were told that the florists, I mean the the growers from Cameron and even imported ones also have to stop and then there's no I mean my supply my supply will not come in so whatever that we have uh, on hand that is what we're going to sell and then uh, about after one or two weeks uh, I keep checking on the supplier side whether they have a uh, new stock coming in. And then finally, they said, oh, we are able to get the, the shipment coming in already. Then only I started to uh, push out whatever idea, the subscription plan that uh, we talked about last month. Yeah, that only I started that. But I actually wanted to start like one or two weeks earlier. But that one, yeah, there's a stock sign there. So I guess... Supply is a is a very big problem for you, lah. Like, uh, yeah, you, most of your supply comes from Cameron, and if Cameron cannot bring their flowers over, then you essentially can't. Um, so basically, basically the supplier side, uh, there's no how to say, uh, when the Cameron side cannot come down, and then even important one also have to stop, right? That means there's no new no new shipment coming in, and then that's it for them. So they are selling whatever that is on hand. So, mm. you know, flower business, right? You can't just sell whatever is on hand. Sometimes where a uh, customer says they want tulip, but mm. uh, tulip is only important one. We can't get it locally. So there's yep. no stock. So there goes that one business. Then, yeah, it's like, I want this, 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 but then not available. Whatever available is here, which not much people want So. It's not gonna sell. Okay. That kind of situation. Okay. And do you do you also see a lot of uh reduction in the demand from your customers as well? Or oh, is that this, the same? This time is definitely much more lesser. To mm. the point where the first the first week that I ran the subscription plan thing, I actually put in about a hundred ringgit. It's not much, uh, but then a hundred ringgit to advertise on social media and I get mm-hmm. zero nothing mm-hmm. came back. And before you were you were able to get quite a bit, right? Sorry? Before this you uh, were before, able to get quite a bit. Before that even I was consistently spending about fifty ringgit weekly to uh, just to advertise my brand, not mm-hmm. any product, just just the brand. There is still one or two uh inquiries and sometimes even the sales. Mm. But this time around, it's really bad because first thing, flower is not really a necessary, uh, necessity. Yeah. So uh, only people that has the ability to spend on such thing will be able to spend it. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All mm. right. Mm. Mm. And in the coming, I would assume that uh, FMCO will probably be ex. Well, it's it doesn't seem like it's gonna go away anytime soon. 
the government says that it, we will still be in this state until it hits four, it goes below 4,000. Now, for some reason, it's starting to go up again. Yeah. And um, do you but have if any? You, if you remember, if you remember last year, also during this time after Raya, and then it spiked up, and then we were in, we were back in the MCO instead of EMC. Uh, bye bye. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh? FM, no, no. Some looser, looser one, la, but uh, then after that, CMCO, RMCO, RMCO, RMCO yes. one of those, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were we were in that stage and then go back to it. Uh, MCO as in semi full lockdown like it, I think, mm. until the end of the year. So mm. it this year the number is even higher than last year, is it isn't it? Yeah. It's, so it's I don't similar, yeah, yeah. So I don't think we are going out anytime soon at this year. Yeah. So what what they're doing now is uh, essentially they want to raise the vaccination program in yeah. order to so it's like they want the vaccination to to hit uh, to to reach people faster than the numbers go up, right? Yeah. And on the other hand, um, the hospital beds are filling up, and the economy is taking a very very major toll. So they need to really balance out these things. So I I don't know, but in any case, these are the things that we can't control. What we can control yeah. is when it happens, uh, how we react towards it. Do you have any plans in mind? Mm-hmm. Uh, to be honest, I'm still thinking what mm. else do, can I do other than Boris business because Boris is not going anywhere you at did, this time. You did talk about the subscription thing that you wanted to, to launch, right? So um, Yeah, I launched did, it already. Okay, okay. The, the is there any subscription, update? right? Yeah. Uh, this is the third, or this third week. A fourth week. It, was it fourth week? I can't remember. Either, mm. either a third or fourth week. Uh, the second week was okay. Then mm-hmm. the last week was uh, I lose a bit of money because no demand and I got too much stock. Mm-hmm. And then this week, this week there's been some delay as well because I was supposed to get uh, the flowers in on Saturday. Then uh, when I contacted the suppliers they say oh uh, we are closed this two days which is saturday and sunday saturday was the first day of the emco which is the enhanced right so it's yep. the full the total full lockdown uh, so i thought they are going to close for a longer time then monday i check again they say oh are we are open uh? yeah everything normal then okay. only i'll be able to run the third week okay so the how how does the subscription format work uh, for now, I don't really foresee people will subscribe the full month, like every week. One, uh, how to say, uh, like they pay one off for the four week, and then I'll just consistently send them every week. I don't okay. foresee people will have the ability to subscribe for one month. So it's mm-hmm. weekly based now, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll see how 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 it goes, yeah. And then the okay. cost, or I mean the the price also I'll set around a hundred and not more than hundred twenty probably. Okay, okay. So the idea here is, uh, essentially, you want to be able to charge people on a monthly basis, and then you will send four batches of flowers to their offices or their homes for that one uh, month. Probably, right? probably not one month, uh, cause it's, mm. if you calculate that. Every week for a hundred, that's be there will be four hundred. So people with mm. half hundred don't want that's so expensive. So yeah, probably by uh weekly first, then probably by weekly, as in uh mm-hmm. two weeks. Okay. If they, yeah. Okay. So the key here, the key to subscription, right, is to be able to lock them down on a series of um of like a batch of you know a batch of few mm-hmm. deliveries. So let's mm-hmm. say, for example, if you're doing bi-weekly, then if it's 100 per, per, per bouquet mm-hmm. or per delivery, then every month you would charge 200 ringgit. Mm-hmm. So you charge them 200 ringgit and then you tell them we will send two bouquets over to you guys on a monthly basis. Mm-hmm. And then um, 
And then once the monthly one works, and then what you do is you extend it a little bit. Let's say, for example, you see, okay, the monthly ones are getting better. We don't look at the temporary problems that we have because MCO is a temporary problem, right? But this is this business model works. It's just that we're not at the right time. So it's a good time for you to polish out, like try it out and see, you know, try version A, version B, version C. But essentially what happens is that if the monthly one works, then essentially you want to go quarterly for three months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it will be slightly cheaper than if they take up the monthly version. And then they go on a half yearly, which will be slightly cheaper than the quarterly version. And then the annual one, which will be the cheapest of all. So that way you will know that every month, in that whole three months, how much flowers you need, how much supply you need, and you can just keep mm-hmm. stocking in, stocking in you know, consistently. And then, uh, you know, then then because there is consistency, then then you can work forward. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the long-term plan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if good. we want mm-hmm. to draw it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but for now, I'll, uh, the thing is, we don't really know what will happen next month. So, I don't, I don't really want to uh, set my goals, my, even my short-term goals, I don't want to set it first because mm. I'll just put it behind uh, behind my mind and see if things are getting better, then okay, this plan can, can I can start launching it. But uh, for now, I, I'll do whatever that I can. I, uh, the second week, I actually did try to uh, sell two types of packages. The miniature which is the small ones and also the the bigger ones and then mm-hmm. uh even a small one also like you know, there's only one sale mm. so okay. uh, i tested that market already so uh probably the time is not uh, it's not the right time so uh i'll probably just do whatever that uh it's showing me signs that it might work Okay. So I'll just stay there and also to minimize my costs and also my, my losses. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's let's brainstorm a little bit. Uh, because I think uh you did say that you may want to move out of the florist business at least temporarily because it's not doing very well at this point, right? Mm-hmm. And let's say, for example, let's let's explore the idea a bit. Um the floral, the florist business is essentially in the gifting business. Yeah. Are there any other type of products and services within the gifting business which you think you can get into, which you think has a higher chance of um, doing, like being able to get some business and not be subjected to this very volatile supply and demand that is going on in the florist uh, business? I was thinking maybe if I if I want to how would say uh to collab with the florist thing again right uh I was thinking maybe get some imported snacks like uh it's not like Japanese imported snacks or whatever and then mm-hmm. uh I can do a package like in a box or maybe even if in a bouquet like a bouquet mm-hmm. of snacks instead of flowers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that might work too, but then I uh I'm still looking for a supply or like where to get it. Okay, but let's just say let's just look at it in a more down to earth version. Let's just test this out first, okay? Uh, mm-hmm. before we go out and look for imported products, let's look at the Malaysian products, for example, because now this whole idea of buying Malaysian and this whole mm-hmm. kita jaga kita this. This whole idea of uh, taking care of, of the smaller businesses in Malaysia is something mm-hmm. that a lot of uh, people are working towards. They are supporting small operators, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. If there is a way to buy products from them, from these people, and then convert them into bouquets, we may not even need to use flowers. We can, you know, mm-hmm. use like, candies and sweets or whatever and convert them into a bouquet yeah. and sell them as gifts and these things last long because most of these things mm-hmm. they are snacks and everything they last very long right paper yeah. and um, plastic and all that um, you won't have to be subjected to supply and demand fluctuations and mm-hmm. it helps them because what you're doing now is also you are 
selling a more beautified version of products made by small business owners. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends uh, that you also know, Kalista, uh, actually mm-hmm. sent me her friend's contact. Uh, her friend is doing dried fruit snacks or something. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I haven't really got the time. No, I, get, I, got, a, I got a lot of time. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't... I haven't really go and contact them and, and see what kind of packages they can offer. Mm. But uh, it's a workable plan. It's just that uh, I need a little bit more variety. So mm. I might need like two to three uh, local sellers or, or to, to supply me with some like a bit colorful stuff. Because dried stuff is actually, the color is quite dull one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So probably add in a bit more like chocolate la maybe cookie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um I one of the guests in building a business, her name is Prabha. Mm-hmm. She actually uh she hand makes vegan uh cookies. Ooh, okay. She makes them from home. So what happened is that she started doing this because she she got uh retrenched from her job last year. And because she was in a lot of anxiety, so she used, she started baking in order to handle the anxiety and keep her in a good frame of mind, right? So then it became a business because it started selling. So I could connect you with Prabha to see if uh, there is a way to, maybe she can supply some small tubs of little uh, tarts or cookies or whatever, mm-hmm. and then you can convert yeah. them into gifts and sure, can sure. give them to people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. In this case, any kind of ideas would, you know, it's a it's an idea worth exploring, lah. You know. Yeah. 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 No, this time, I mean, like everything is so uncertain. You, it's the whole thing. The the whole thing. I would. Uh, I mean, the whole way of how we do stuff, right? It's actually have to like trial and error because you don't know. You can't really foresee what's the what the result is. So certain times like this, you just have to try and see if it's work. Uh, then go ahead. If, if it doesn't, then probably still do, but then minimize uh, the scale a bit. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. Okay, let's move on to um, last week. I did introduce this new section in the show called Dream a Little mm. Dream. It's yeah. a section where we throw out hypotheticals, like assume that we have this or we have that, and what would we have done differently and how would we have approached our businesses differently. Um, so for this week, let's do one question. Um, I've already sent it to you. So the question is, what are the things you wish you had known before coming into this business? So now you have been in this business for quite a while now, right? About almost a year? Uh, yeah. Okay. If you don't minus the, the times that I wasted doing nothing. But- yeah, just so, so you have done this for almost a year now. And before this, you are in the business, but not as a business owner. So it's a completely different dynamic. So now that you are, are in this for a while, what are the things that you wish you had known before coming into this business? Uh, first thing is, uh, I wish I, I know how to uh, target the right audience. Mm. Uh, it's still going back to marketing, which is my uh, weakness. And also, uh, and, yeah, because uh, sometimes when you think that you put on the whatever setting in an ad, right, and then you think this might work because everything, every keyword is relevant, but then it turns out uh, actually people that is interested in your product, right, might not really, uh, I mean, your ad will might not be appear to them because uh, uh, the whole setting thing, right, uh, on, in the ad, right, it's actually how you, uh, for example, if you want to look for people that has a uh, uh, higher buyer power, uh, buying power, then probably you want to type in some keywords that they also like, like for example, uh, jewelry, like if, if they are interested in buying jewelry, right, they, they might have the buying power to buy something that, uh, I'm selling, which is it's not really necessary, but then uh, 
you might want to put a flower there just mm. for fun. Yeah. Mm. Stuff like mm. this. Yeah. I, I wish I have known that uh before coming in rather than uh trial and error, trial and error, then only I found out mm. this. Yeah. Mm. So it's like like essentially what you're saying is um if a person if you want to sell an expensive car, for example. Mm-hmm. you would also look for people who are into expensive watches and expensive clothing and yeah. things like that. Not necessarily directly looking at people who want to buy uh, the car, but they yeah. also like other stuff as well, right? Yep. So they Correct. could be yeah. interested in what you have to sell. Yeah, sometimes you have to put yourself in their shoe and then if, let's say you want to target some someone that wants to buy a car and then mm. you want to... Imagine that yours, you yourself have the power mm. to buy that car. I mean, even for a few more of these type of car. And then what else, if, if this is my lifestyle, what else would I be looking for to buy mm. on, on online or whatever? Yeah. yeah. So sometimes you have to switch yeah. your mind a bit. Yeah. Good, sir. This is, um, this is a very important part of marketing. It's a yeah. consumer behavior part. So, and it is good that you are able to see that. So now when you run ads, you're able to um, kind of put yourself, like you said, you know, put yourself in the shoes and, and see. Yeah. Is there anything that you, th- you wish you, uh, you had known before coming into the business? Uh, I also wish that I know how to bake. So I don't have to like keep looking for people that collapse. Like, you know, most of the time people want to pair a bouquet of flower with cake or, or something that is uh, edible and for the occasion. But mm. then I have to like, there, there's, no, there's no baker around me that I know of that mm. uh, uh, bakes really good stuff. Because, mm. uh, you know, people nowadays, right, if it's like normal branded, I don't want to say, say brand, uh, normal branded that you buy from the supermarket, right? They don't want it. They want mm. something that is special, like yes. Uh, this baker's specialty is this this type of cake, and then they mm. want that. So, uh, yeah, I I wish I I know how to bake. So even if the customers are very chin shy, I will just like, oh, I have this. This is uh homemade mm. by me. Uh, if you're okay, then you can just go. I don't have to like sauce mm. here, sauce there. Mm. But I do uh, think. I do think on the other end, right, that uh, not knowing how to bake is a good thing because um, if you want to learn how to bake today and then if people in the future will want to pair it with something else, for example, uh, clothing or caps, then you have to learn how to stitch. So it becomes an endless chasing after these other things that you also need to learn how to do. Right. Oh, that's, that, that, that's not really my reason. Uh, my reason is mm. convenience only. Yes, like, convenience uh, and control. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, convenience and control. Instead of looking for someone and working with them, you just bake yourself, wrap it up yourself, and mm-hmm. set it up yourself. But there is good in being able to collaborate with someone because if you know three other people who bake and three people have different kind of baking style, then now you can sell three different types of cake already. So I yeah, think that three, is something three of their specialty. Right? Yeah, three of their specialties already. And I think that is something that uh, you may be on the right track at this point. So focus on becoming good at what you do mm. and then just get to know people. So by the end of this episode, I will send you the contacts to Prabha and then maybe, yeah, she's good at a few types of cookies and she can also make cakes. Uh, like, it, it was funny because when you were saying this, right, all of a sudden the visual of a pound cake, a lemon What's drizzle a pound? pound cake, it's a kind of like a long lemon cake, just a very basic long cake ah, with, okay. a, with lemon drizzle on top. And then okay. it's it's right in the smack in the middle and you build, you make a bouquet out of it and you give it to people. Wow. I think okay. that would be nice as well. But yeah, these are just those kind of creative imagination stuff that come out. But I think you're on the right track here. Uh, you just got to find people who are, who you would like to work with. There are a lot of bakers and everything around. Yeah. yeah. And I guess the only other issue is that when people buy cakes and everything, right, they buy the cake that is, um, that has dressing. You are the dresser of these, these things. Mm-hmm. So you cannot have the dressing 
cost more than the product that they're eating. Yeah. So that is where it's very tricky. And this is where your specialty lies. And how can you use as little material as possible to create a very fun looking packaging? Mm, yeah, but uh, that one. I would say if you're if you're putting flowers in, right, then probably just a few, a few only. But uh, it all depends how is the product shaped and uh, look like. Then only mm. you'll be able to think of what uh, what container that you want to put in, and also yeah. the, does it have a bit more space? Even if there has it has space, right? If I put some decoration there, would that be nice or not? Yeah, uh, these kind of stuff that is uh, a little bit tricky, yeah. but yeah. then, yeah, you have to you have to look at the product, uh, the the look at the product first. Then only you'll be able to think of uh, the decoration ideas. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that is that Agreed. is the yeah. thing that uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is it is tough, but um, yeah, I guess we just got a soldier on now. Uh. Mm-hmm. find some good ideas and some uh, yeah some things to do at this point yeah but this time i i don't know but then i think most of people also uh when they wake up right they still want to go back to sleep and then when it's time to sleep right their eyes are just open the they're just wide away and then it this is happening to me as well so mm-hmm. all these thinking right always happen when i switch off my light and then want to go to bed and then all these thoughts are actually swimming around, swimming around. But then when I wake up, right, I just feel like I want to sleep. Yes, actually, coming to that, right, I actually want to tell you something about what some of the, most of the most creative minds in the world, what habits they have. Um, I don't think this is proven, but a lot of creative minds that I know, because especially writers and all that, right? Because I write a lot as well. So I find that I'm the most creative after 12 a.m. In the, at night. Yeah. Between here. 12 to 1 a.m. in the morning, I become very creative because why? The world has gone to sleep. There's no distraction. There is no noise. And I can sit down and I can be in my, with my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And there are also people who actually wake up around 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. to start writing. Because that is a time when the world has not woken up yet. And it has led a lot of people to believe that uh, if you want to be creative, right, do it during these times. Because during the time when everybody is awake, you're always busy with stuff. You're either chatting with someone, you're working, or someone will call you and they will chat with you. So your train of thought always gets disrupted. But when everyone else is asleep and you're alone by yourself, that is when everything starts to juice up. Yeah. Yeah. So if even yeah. So if you want to, it's actually not wrong to do that, to stay up at night or wake up very early in the morning to do creative work. Uh no, I I I get what you mean by then. Uh the thing is why I am uh, a bit worried about my health if I keep thinking until like 2 or 3 a.m. and then wake up late, right? Uh, it might not be so good for my health. Uh, so I'll try, I, I'm, I'm trying not to sleep very late uh, mm. at the moment, but then also I need a lot of like new ideas. So a bit ironic, like, you, want, you want your brain to keep thinking of new ideas, but then you also want to sleep. Yeah. So, um, so let's say, okay, let's, let's look at this. Uh, do you need to wake up very early in the morning? Uh, no, not really, but uh, I want to I wanna keep it a habit to sleep early and wake up early. Okay, then are you able to instead sleep earlier and wake up earlier? Wake up at 4-ish, 5 o'clock? Oh, not that early. The earliest I can go is uh, 8 a.m. as of no. now. Uh. It has to be earlier. You have to wake up before everybody else, before the sun rises. Because that is where I agree. I, 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 completely, I completely get it. That is where it is. Because when I write, the best things come out. I can, I can spend the entire day coming up with ideas and I can put a pencil on, on paper, right? And nothing will come out for the whole day. 
But come 12.30 a.m., I can do so much in 10 minutes than I could in the entire day. So that is something that I have fallen to. This is my system and it works for me. Yes, the downside is that you might stay up too long and you will not get enough sleep, but you don't have to do this every day because all you need to do is have these ideas once, twice, and then you can act on the ideas. When you act on the ideas, you don't need to be doing it during those late nights anyway. So don't make it a habit, but occasionally when you're searching for ideas, do it once, twice. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. Like, yeah. All right, if nothing else, um, thank you very much for joining us this week. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit short, I but I, I can see that uh, things are really taking a toll on you. Um, it is taking a toll on why a lot do, of people as well. Do I, do, I look, do I look higher? No, I mean, uh, well, the, the morale is a bit low. And mm. it's, it's not just you, actually. A lot of people having the a same issue as well. Or yeah. All the people that I interview are also having the same issue. I mean, I myself, I'm feeling it as well. And um, it's all this prolonged version of it that is making it yeah. even worse. It's just, it's just that I, I, I'm not so good in covering, covering it up. I'll just show whatever I'm going onto my face <laughs> if I see people. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Well, yeah. I guess in a way, um, it's a matter of like uh, you and your friends helping each other out by staying positive. There is mm. one way of doing that because mm. negativity and positivity is very contagious. So if you meet more negative people, you tend to exaggerate the negativity. But if you meet more positive yeah. people, then it's not about suppressing it, but it's about feeling good in spite of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just have to talk more to people. Yeah, yes. Chat with people. You, you are a kind of person who likes to chat with people. So talking with people and um, even doing virtual calls with them will help you take your mind off. No, I like I, I like to talk things. face to face. I yeah, but we can't do that right now, right? So, yeah. Yeah. so the best that we can do is do video calls like this and just, you know, chit chat and yeah. talk about stuff. <laughs> okay, in any case, Eddie, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, let me do the outro thing. <laughs> tell us where, uh, so, so before we go, tell us where listeners can find out about you, your products and where to buy from you. Uh, uh, just go to, uh, if you have an IG or Facebook account, just search for Flourish December first to find. Okay. And when they make, uh, and they can DM you to, to place orders, right? Yeah. DM uh, and also WhatsApp. Okay, amazing. That's all for this week's episode of Building a Business Podcast. Building a Business is supported by Patreon patrons like you. From as low as one US dollars a month, you can help transform Building a Business Podcast into a source of inspiration and lessons for all entrepreneurs and small business owners all over the world. To support, go to patreon.com slash building a business. If you do not wish to provide monetary contribution, simply like and drop a review on your podcast feeder to increase visibility and hopefully the show will reach someone who will also find value in our content. Our podcast is available on Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, Breaker and Spotify. We post full videos and YouTube clips on uh, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. This is Building a Business with December 1st Flores and Eddie. Thank you very much. 